Hi, I'm Fuad Johari and I love Kampung Kelam because both sides of my family have close connections to this area. My mother's side lived at 27 Bustra Street and my father's side lived in the Istana Kampung Kelam compounds and my childhood was filled with memories of Kampung Kelam. Hi, I'm Dewi Imelda. Both my grandfathers did business in this area. My maternal grandfather, Haji Masom, he was a diamond cutter and he used to come down here to deal with his clients and to meet with other Banjaris diamond cutters. My grandfather from Sumatra, Mr. Omar, um, he used to run a nasi padang store on the corner of Jalan Pinang and North Bridge Road. The Kampung Kelam Citizen Engagement Project is an effort by NHB to gather volunteers uh, from all walks of life to get the stories of the heritage businesses that are in Kampung Kelam itself. So for us as volunteers, there are two tracks. We do research and we also conduct interviews with the different heritage businesses within this area. I volunteered for this citizen engagement project because I opened a cafe on Arab Street in 2014. I feel that I want to get to know the community here that is full of history and culture. I had an interview with Mr. Hazmi, the owner of Rumah Makan Minang, and he was just taking me through all the different photos that he hung up in his restaurant on the second floor. And basically, we shared a lot of memories that we had of Kampung Kelam. This family business has been operated, I think, since 1950s. Previously, we were from uh, my grandma. I mean, the branding is called Sabah Menanti, lah, mm. Siang dan Malam, together with Rumah Makan Minang. A, a, mm. After I was born, my mom uh, went solo and started Minang. Cik Beda, so my family used to stay in 27 Bustra Street. Do you happen to know that place? 27 Bustra Street? Uh, what's your mother's name? Uh, she's Faiza. Yeah. But Isa is my friend, you know. Okay. Your yeah, our small world, your yeah, our your grandfather, yeah. Haji Usop. Ah yes. And your nene is uh, Cik Ani. Yes, Cik Ani. Yeah, yeah. your our uh, we go Haji together, you know, 1976. Oh, wow. okay. She's very nice lady. So I was invited to interview the third generation owners of Jamal Kazura. Hi, Mr. Samir. Hello, hi. Okay, Mr. Samir, tell me, how was Jamal Kazura established and when? The company was established in 1933 by my late grandfather. It was registered as Kazura Company back then. Mm -hmm. And the company started out by trading in like perfumes, essential oils, uh, gemstones, religious articles and accessories for the Muslim Hajj. I felt very inspired because the stories that I've heard were basically of resilience and tenacity. A lot of them had gone through so many challenges, not just from the beginning, but especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. And they bounced back even stronger after that. And I felt inspired to do more as a volunteer to basically help these businesses stay afloat and ensure that Singapore will continue to have these businesses within the community in the future. I think that's very important to know and to share to anyone out there who's willing to listen because Kampung Glam is a very, very important area. It's a, it's a cultural hub for the Malay community. So I think it's, it's great to, to know its history and to hear the voice of the Kampung Glam heritage business owners. If the new businesses and the heritage businesses get to know each other, I think that the potential of having that sort of kampung spirit, gotong royong, what we call in Malay, is very, very much alive. All the different stories that they had, all the personal experiences that they had, gave me a lot more context as to how important this neighbourhood is to Singapore. So it was not just a place where people did business, but it was a place where people lived, it was a place where people enjoyed each other's company, and that's something that I feel is very hard to find in this uh, day and age. My hope for them is that they will continue to innovate and change with the times, because it's essentially the story of Singapore.